time I come back to Stouffville, I am inspired. I see a community here that is rich and diverse, full of opportunity, and on the cusp of something new. It is people like Jane who inspire me and remind me that there is something going on here that's a little bit different, something that is engaged and that bridges communities. To think of having Jane as the political heart of our community gives me confidence that we as the new Mark and Stubble Riding will have the capacity to reach our potential as one of the most engaged, growing, diverse, and influential communities in Canada. There is a wonderful program planned for you this evening. To start off, we have a very special guest who will be singing our national anthem. Her name is Rachel Remisiar. Rachel is seven years old and she is in grade two at St. Benedict Catholic School in Markham. She's been learning classical music since the age of four and her ambition is to become a singer and to make people happy. Well, Rachel, we are very, very happy that you will start off our program tonight by sharing your voice and singing O Canada. Rachel, welcome. to having a parliament 
full of people who think their job is to read the talking points from the Prime Minister's office instead of actually taking the views of their riding to Ottawa. That their job is just to be the messenger boy from Ottawa to the riding and to tell people what's good for them. And why, you know, and that the idea of consultation is, here's what we're going to do, you love it, don't you? Is, is not any more okay. And that's why I think that, that when you see a candidate like Jane Philpott, who actually, as a family doctor, has seen so much. And I remember going to Ottawa thinking I knew nothing about politics, um, except that the things that we were facing were all things that we'd seen in our office. Poverty, violence, the environment, shelter, equity, education. This were, these were all things that had come through a small business person trying to get a loan. Uh, changes to the Divorce Act and custody. This is, this is all things that we deal with. That, that when you can put a human face on it, you actually have a very different way of looking and judging actually what the decisions that the government ought to take based on, as Jane Jacobs would say, that, that great policy comes when the decision makers can see in their mind's eye the people affected. And that's why Jane's candidacy is so important, that we really do need people in Ottawa who actually understand the, the, and are truly intimate with the lives of the people affected by the decisions the government takes. And, and not only that, that Jane brings to, to Parliament her unbelievable experience um, in Africa and the places where, where, where those, those citizens and those people leave Canada to be raising their game and doing a much better job than we've done in the last little while. So I, I guess I, um, tonight I came from a, an event on Queen Street and and I think it might have been, no, not quite the last time I saw Jane, but where Jane was, was uh, doing an event for Dignitas, where she was sitting, um, telling the story of her experience in Africa and, and actually what matters and how you can fund things that work and stop funding things that don't work and that how you can, 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 can actually um, be trusted by governments to make better decisions in terms of the governments of Africa. And that's what Canada used to do, and it's what we need Canada to do again. And so I, I just, um, <laughs> you know, last couple of years during the leadership campaign, I stayed neutral as chair of the Women's Caucus and, and, and as the Aboriginal Affairs Critic because I wanted to make sure none of the candidates screwed up on that file. Uh, and so it was uh, hugely interesting for me to go across the country just talking about a couple of things. That, that, that we needed a leader, not a boss. That we needed a leader. And I think that's what's so exciting right now about Justin Trudeau. That he is seriously a leader who's not going to bring tablets down from on high. This is a guy who wants to talk to the people who know things. And that's why to have Jane Gilpott on the team means that she will be her. She will be, that she will be asked. She will, she will be a, a serious part of everything that, that we as liberals do in health and health care. Knowing that it's different. Knowing we want more health. We don't want to need health care if we did this thing right. And that the kind of, of, of role that Canada can play in the world is huge if you, if you actually listen to the people who've been there, done that, and have the lived experience as well as the expertise. So tonight, I just want to say we can't wait um, to have Jane uh, in Ottawa with us uh, in, 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 as an in integral part of, of not only the policy making, but actually the best practice of having somebody who knows how to listen and how to articulate what are the needs of the people. That's what doctors do. They ask, they listen, and together they make a plan. It's not all that different as an MP, and I can't wait till we have Jane Philpott, MD, MP. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to come here to support my friend, Dr. Jane Philpott. 
I have worked with her on many occasions, both at the and some of her fundraising activities and some of the hospital uh, the uh, programs that she's been involved in. And I've seen her. She is a true leader. She is some someone that understands not only the politics, but she also understands how to deal with people, different communities. And she said she's very easy at all this. She knows how to deal with different communities and she's very comfortable. To me, that's a great sign because as the multiculturalism is growing and you're seeing more and more leaders that know what the communities make up of. So I'm very happy to say that not only has she got the experience as a doctor, I think she's the best doctor that I know. No, sorry, you're not the practicing doctor, I don't want to say. You're the politician now. This is the politician to be. And I'll tell you something, when she is elected as the next member of parliament for Soville, Martin, uh, sorry, for Soville, Richard here, she will probably be the best member of parliament because she is a good listener. She has those qualities of a good leader because she knows how to listen and then how to execute. And then she is also has shown in her in her ex previous experience that how she can communicate with people. I think those are the qualities of a good member of parliament that they can communicate, they can represent, and then also make sure that they look after the interests of their constituents. So I'm very happy with all what I've seen, whether it was a fundraising activity she did. The business that she carried on as the head of the uh, family physicians group, she had a huge budget. Uh, and there were 50 people that were working under her. So it's not, you can't come around and say I'm a good businesswoman or I have this. I mean, to look after and run a department with 50 people, it's not that easy. So I know that with that business experience, with the fundraising activity, and also being a good listener, I think she's going to be making a very good member of parliament. And you and I, when she gets elected, are going to be proud that our friend, Dr. Jane Philpott, is the next member of parliament for this area. And it's going to be a position of... At this time, I would like to welcome Dr. Patty Whelan. Dr. Whelan is the chief of surgery at Markham Stowell Hospital, where he practices general surgery. He has known Jane for almost 15 years as a medical colleague, and Jane tells me that he was responsible for inspiring her to start the Give a Day to World AIDS movement in 2004. We've asked Patty to share a few words tonight, and he will be making the formal introduction for Jane. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Whelan. Without fail, her she's walked the walk and talked the talk of compassion towards patients, to colleagues, towards the people she teaches, towards the people in our hospital community, and I am so proud to be her friend. I am so proud to be associated with her at the hospital, to have been associated with her in the Give a Day program, and to be associated with her in this, in this in, uh, thing that she's embarking on tonight. And about a year ago, I got a glimmer of hope. Jane, one of the finest people I ever met, came to me and said, you know something, what do you think I ran for, you know, the liberal nomination? What do you think? And I said, oh my God, that is the best news I have ever heard. <laughs> I, I, I'm just so happy, I'm just so happy. This first as someone who cares for people, who really cares for people, and has demonstrated consistently for the 15 years that I know her, wants to go and serve our country at the highest level. 
I can just think of no better way that we should we should spend the rest of our time than supporting Jane in, in her attempts in her very, very important work that it will be good not just for the riding of Mark and Stowe, but for the country in general. And I'm really this to great privilege. And everyone says privilege, great privilege. It's a great joy for me to introduce to you my dear friend, and I hope soon to be the Member of Parliament for Mark and Stowe. Thank 
You came out tonight, folks, to help me mark a new season in my career, a new, uh, a new theme, a political theme in my career. And you know, uh, Carolyn talked about the fact that she, one of the times we met recently was at a campaign school that I was at in Prince Edward Island in August. And Carolyn was one of the speakers there, giving out tips to potential candidates. She, I learned a lot of things from her, but one of the things she said to, uh, to us that day was, you've got to have a posse. And uh, I remembered that. And in fact, that really is a, a, a big theme for me tonight, is the fact that you all are here because you're part of my posse. <laughs> so I couldn't agree with Carolyn more. When I look back and I think through all of the journeys that I've made in my life, and I think about how important it is, and how much I have needed the help of some very important people around me to launch every different season of my career. And many of you are here with me tonight. And I, I just wanted to point to some of the others who have helped me in other launching moments of my life. Somewhere out there are my mom and dad. And, uh, and three of my sisters, my three sisters are here tonight as well. So it really means a lot to me to have them here. I was, I was raised as I'm in a home environment where uh, opportunity and encouragement were in great abundance. But I was taught, as I'm sure many of you were, that with privilege comes responsibility. And I wouldn't be here tonight without the guidance of my parents teaching me that, and also giving me the confidence to try just about anything. Um, they encouraged me every step of the way, including when I was a 22-year-old medical student and I decided to go to Africa for four months and work in a remote hospital in Western Kenya. My mom and dad cheered me along, and that was a step in my life that really did change the course of my life. I'm thankful to have my husband here, somewhere out there. <laughs> and my steadfast companion through so many adventures over the last 27 years. Uh, early in our marriage, we decided uh, to move to West Africa, to the country of Niger, and set up home in that country, um, which is uh, lived on the edge of the Sahara Desert for almost nine years. Um, the support of my husband and my children um, and the rest of my family is essential in every big undertaking I've made in my life. I'm thankful to have people here who are co colleagues of mine through the Give a Day movement, people like Julie and Jen and Patty and many others. Um, since 2004, we have worked together. We started this campaign challenging people, starting with the doctors here at Martin Stovall Hospital, saying, why don't we do something about the HIV pandemic? Why don't we challenge one another to give one day's pay on World AIDS Day and to give it to great organizations that will use the money well to help the people in places affected by HIV? That was something that was an exciting step for me, but it was not something I ever did alone. I did it because, again, of the posse of people around that made it possible. I also wanted to point to my friend Claire Payne, who's come up from Toronto, and she doesn't want to be pointed out in the crowd. But Dr. Claire Payne is somebody who's meant a lot to me. Um, she's played a key role in my life because she was the one that introduced me to the work that I've had the privilege of doing in Ethiopia. Uh, it's an amazing initiative, a uh, partnership between the University of Toronto and Addis Ababa University that I've been involved in since 2008. And Claire introduced me to physicians at Addis Ababa University, and I've had the privilege of working alongside them to help start the very first family medicine training program in Ethiopia, which launched earlier this year, to our great delight. So, thank you. Perhaps one of the biggest policies that's here tonight is all my friends from Marcus Stovall Hospital, particularly from the Department of Family Medicine. I don't know how many family doctors there are in this room, but there are a lot, so feel free to collapse and what to do, uh, because you'll be taken care of. <laughs> and, uh, you know, five or six years ago, I can't even remember how long it's been now, but when I was asked to become chief of the Department of Family Medicine at Marcus Stovall Hospital, and I was charged with the task of helping to open the very first family medicine teaching unit at the hospital in affiliation with the University of Toronto. At first I didn't think it was possible to do it and I really hesitated for quite a while, but 
Um, with the help of fa fabulous colleagues at the hospital, we've been able to do that. And we've now trained, we've had 28 young physicians working with us, trained to become family doctors. And uh, through the unit, we've been able to provide care to over 6,000 people in our community who didn't have a family doctor before this unit opened. <laughs> Um, and I look back at all of those things and those undertakings and I think about how overwhelming everything seemed at first. I have to tell you tonight that getting involved in politics is possibly the most daunting step I've taken. And that's why I'm so glad all of you are here to spur me on in this step. In fact, my greatest strength for sure as I enter into this new territory is knowing that I'm not going to do this alone. It's knowing that there are hundreds of you here in this room and outside of this room, I believe there are hundreds more who are the ones who are going to energize me, encourage me, and enable me along the way. And with that in mind, tonight I'm delighted to formally announce my objective to be nominated by the Liberal Party of Canada in the new riding of Martin Stouffville. Blessing on you and your journey right now, on your family, 
and on your posse. <laughs> yeah. So this is a song that um, it was written by Mrs. Avery Stuttle. It's called, Oh Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. For my benefit, I will sing the first verse in Zulu. And then for your benefit, I will sing the second verse in English. Wow. 